Thanks, Nishi. Welcome, everyone. Uh, as she said, we're going to talk today about uh, mobile applications and some proxy shenanigans. Uh, how's everyone doing today? Did you guys get out and participate in the shen shenanigans last night? <laughs> I saw some of you. Um, just a real quick, how many of you are developers in the room? Pen testers? Something else? <laughs> anyway, so to jump right in, so we kind of probably all know why we're here. Uh, mobile applications have exploded over the past few years. Uh, right now, there's about one and a half million applications on just Google and Apple app stores. Um, that's, that's a lot. Uh, and that has nothing to do with any of the internal applications that all of you are developing. Um, so we focused this talk on just Android and iOS, specifically because we don't really see a whole lot of BlackBerry and Windows requests yet. I don't know if Windows is going to catch up to these two or not. Um, well, I guess we'll see over the next few months with uh, some of the new releases. So obviously, we know that uh, these devices can do pretty much everything. I mean, I, th I think back just a few years ago, you know, 96, I think I had my first cell phone. You know, I was about this big, looked like I was carrying a big 357 Magnum on my hip. Um, and, and now I'm, you know, hacking applications that run on these devices that do all of these things. You know, I'm, I'm watching direct TV and, and all kinds of stuff from my little mobile device. It's, it's just crazy to think about all that. And this is why we're here. I mean, a real quick Google search, I think this took me about 30 seconds to come up with just a few uh, mobile applications that have been found that have flaws and vulnerabilities you know, over the past couple of years. Um, and this is going to continue to increase. Um, so obviously, we need to employ our security practices that we currently employ in all of our web apps and our other client server apps that we've been doing for years, for some reason we're forgetting about it in the mobile space. Um, we want to be first to market. We want to get there now, uh, yesterday actually. Uh, and this is what happens. So why is the, the mobile space a little more risky? I think we all kind of understand that, you know, we have these devices on us 24-7. Obviously it's in my pocket. I go into Starbucks or Caribou or, or a coffee shop and I see people all the time, they got their computers, they got their mobile devices, they get up and go get another cup of coffee, run to the restroom and leave their stuff. Well, we're fast. If I wanted to steal that, jailbreak it, install something and return it to them, they probably wouldn't even know it. Uh, what, what does that mean for your applications? We need to look at the applications from, from that standpoint. This is an interesting stat, right? So I just saw the other day that there are 6 billion cell phone subscriptions in the world today. Think about that. There's 7 billion people, right? That is a ton. I mean, not, not all of those subscriptions are for one person. I, mean, I myself have three. Uh, but still, that, that's an insane amount. Not all of them are going to be smartphones and run apps. Uh, but I, I guarantee you someday they will with some of the things Mozilla is doing with, with their new platform and stuff to target those uh, smaller countries and so on. Uh, but 113 of these are lost every minute in the U.S. alone. Uh, that has nothing to do with the rest of the world. What does that mean to your application if uh, someone steals a phone? Is there data on there that they can get at? Uh, it's, it's things we need to think about. Uh, so these are the three types of mobile apps. Real quick, client, client server, uh, mobile web apps. Some people might say that those two are kind of one and the same. I like to split them up because there's little differences here and there. But today's talk is really going to focus on the traffic. Most of the apps that we look at and do pen tests on utilize HTTP or HTTPS. And there's definitely issues when it comes to trying to proxy these apps. Uh, more so on the Android side, and Dan will get into that, uh, than iOS. But there's also some things on iOS that we've seen recently that uh, have caused issues. And, and we shouldn't be spending two days just to look at the traffic of an application. And that's not the point. The point is to secure the app. You know, we should be able to do that quickly. So let's talk about that. If you've done any sort of pen testing or play with any of these apps, you've seen these screens quite frequently. Um, obviously, uh, iOS on the left, Android on the right. So you know, proxying HTTP traffic in mobile apps is, is pretty straightforward, but not so when you get to SSL and TLS. In my mind, it's kind of like washing an elephant, right? I mean, you know what the end result is. But how you do it, I, I, I don't know how we got up there in the first place, but uh, it's, it's quite crazy. So I'm going to hand this over to Dan. He's going to dig into Android. Like I said, Android really is where we run into most of the issues when we're trying to proxy traffic. 
Uh, Android and Google have come a long way in the past year or so to help us in this respect. But anyway, yeah. So there are there are two different issues that we run into when we when we start proxying the mobile apps on, on Android. And first of all is setting up the proxy, actually telling the device or telling the emulator that you want it to use your proxy. And then if the application is using SSL, there are some, some issues there as well. Um, so first of all, in setting up the proxy, there are a lot of options to, to choose between if you try and search around. Um, you know, you can use the uh, you know, settings in the emulator uh, are different from uh, you know, settings on if you're trying to test on a phone. You know, it might be that you use a third-party app like Proxy Droid. Uh, if you're using the emulator, maybe you set the APN proxy setting. Or maybe you give a command line argument to use uh, an HTTP proxy. Um, so there's a lot of things that you can do to try and, and tell it to use use your proxy. Um, and then. You know, the issue with, with SSL is that in mean, native applications, they don't give you an, an alert uh, that the certificate is not accepted you know, to, uh, to say, yes, I want to trust it, as you would if you're testing a web application. Uh, and even in the Android browser, you can accept uh, you know, your proxy's certificate, but the, the native apps, oftentimes they just fail silently. It just doesn't, doesn't work. Um, so you know, with all of these options that you have to use, we've tested many of them, uh, you know, the different ways to set up the proxy and they're kind of inconsistent. Um, you know, it depends on the environment that you're testing in. If you're testing in the emulator, you want to use one approach. Uh, if you're testing on a, a physical device, you want to use another approach. And they don't work for all applications necessarily. Some of the, some of the options may only proxy traffic for your, uh, for web applications. But, you know, it might get ignored completely for a native app, even if it's an HTTP protocol, which is, uh, is, is a little frustrating. I, uh, it should, doesn't seem like it should act that way, uh, but that's what we, we've seen with, uh, with our experience so far. Um, so we've taken sort of an approach of the least invasive and most successful process to the most invasive and most time-consuming process to get a proxy to work, and ideally, it works, you know, on the left side of this, and you don't have to go way down the rabbit hole with trying to set up a forward proxy for the application because that can be rather hairy. Um, so, I'm going to talk about how we go about doing a reverse proxy, uh, the the most effective way that we've seen. Um, so, first of all, you're going to pick a proxy tool, um, you know, Burp, Fiddler, uh, Web Scarab, Zap, um, whatever your preference is, and. Uh, the next step is going to be to import a certificate onto the device uh, if it's an application that uses SSL. And we would recommend that using ICS, I think is uh, the latest version of Android in the, in the emulator. I think it makes it a little easier for importing certificates. Um, you can set up your proxy on a browser, <coughs> get your SSL cert by exporting it. Um, and then you just push it onto the device, and this, this will work for a, uh, for, with the emulator or on a physical device. And then on the device, under the settings, security, uh, there's an option to install from SD card, and that just trusts your proxy certificate, so that when you, you know, set up the proxy, um, it's not gonna give you that error at all. And then to configure the proxy setting in an emulator is really easy. Under the settings, uh, wireless networks, and down to access point names, you can set the proxy setting right there. But if you're testing from the emulator, uh, there's a virtual network that it creates on your machine, right? So you have your host machine, and then you have the emulator inside of your host machine. If you tell it, like you would with a web application, that you want a proxy, you know, the proxy address is 127.0.0.1, that's going to stay inside of the emulator. It's never going to hit your proxy. Uh, so you have to use the Android emulator's <coughs> destination for your host machine to get it to, to go to the right destination, to say 10.0.2.2. And these slides will be available. So, so once we put that in as the, the APN name, or proxy setting, and uh, we start getting proxy traffic. So that's pretty painless and, and, 
and we're pretty happy when it works that way. Um, sometimes you need to test an application from a device, though. It's not, for whatever reason, it's not possible for you to test it in an emulator. Um, so if you're going to do that, um, if you, you root the device and install the certificate in the same process. Uh, you just need to install a third-party app like Proxy Droid or, or something along those lines to, there are several, um, to tell the, the device to use your, your proxy, uh, which would be some location on your network. Doesn't necessarily work for all applications. We've had some inconsistency with that as well. Um, so it's, you know, your mileage may vary. Uh, you may have to take another approach. Um, if you don't have ICS, it, it seems like you need to manually modify the trust store. Um, so that can be a pretty painful process if you have to go that route. Uh, it looks something like this. Uh, you have to pull the, the trust store off the phone, which has to be rooted first and then manually import your certificate, remount the file system, push the trusted store back on the phone. And it's a, it's a little bit of uh, time consuming. So uh, I, you know, I, I would recommend if possible to use ICS when you're, when you're testing uh, Android applications, just because it, it seems to be easier with that. But if, if none of those approaches work, um, we can try and set up a forward proxy, which as I mentioned before, it goes you can go way down the rabbit hole uh, chasing this. Um, so hopefully the reverse proxy is going to work for you. But uh, so a forward proxy, so you're going to tell the application to use your proxy as the server that it would be talking to, um, and then the proxy is going to send that traffic to the real server. Um, you know, without you know, the application doesn't care. It's as far as it knows, it's talking to the real server. But in order to get that to work, you have to either modify and recompile the source code, or you're going you're gonna to have to try and you know, decompile, uh, hack the APK file, which is um, you know, also goes way down there. I mean, you want to get away from trying to, to manually edit the binary files if you can. Um, it's not very, not very consistent. Um, if you ever try to decompile and recompile, a, you know, a jar. The Java application. You know, it's, you know, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So, um, so ideally, to do this, uh, you would have source code. And you would just change the server name and the source code to the location of your proxy. Um, so in this example, you know, I'm telling you the proxy is 10.0.2.2, .2, which is my host machine. Um, and then the proxy needs to be able to support this forward proxy mode. And we, we've used Burp to do this. Uh, I'm sure that there are, there are other ones that do. Um, same. So if you don't have this option, you can try and, and modify the binary by disassembling it. You've got to locate wherever the URL is. It may be in a class file. It might be in a, you know, a resource file. If it's in a resource file, it should be in pretty good shape getting the APK bundled back up. But if you need to reassemble class files, that can be very sketchy. Um, but if you re-sign the application with your own self-signed certificate, and put it back on your device or on your, your in the emulator. It's not gonna it's not gonna care as long as you've uninstalled the previous app. Um, it and this definitely does not always work. Um, it's a last resort, I would say. So it that looks something like this. Um, in I use an example of Facebook. I'm not gonna go too deep into this, but I, I pulled Facebook off of a device and and decompiled it. And in this case, it did work, but I tried to do the same thing with a Twitter application, and I couldn't recompile it. So it's, um, you know, if you have source code is the ideal way to do this, but, um, but it does work in some cases. But there, there are many tools and resources for um, modifying and hacking APK files. Uh, I've listed some of them here. You may have heard of uh, APK Tool or Smalling. It's a very good Android uh, APK decompiler. Um, and then there are several places where people have done some research on, on that type of stuff as well. Ideally, reverse proxy will work for you. You want to avoid going down that route. So, um, and I'm going to hand it back to Dave to talk about the uh, iOS proxying. So. so, iOS isn't as difficult, I guess, as Android is when it comes to proxying. Um, it's just kind of always worked uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, but there's been some, some new things uh, with iOS that, that we wanted to talk about. Uh, obviously, trusting starts. That's the easy part. 
Um, but what about this new found thing of cert pinning? Um, you know, the, the recent uh, SSL issues on Android research that was just released a couple of days ago um, about some of this stuff and how more people should do cert pinning from devices. Well, what does that mean for testing? Uh, it makes it much more difficult, right? Um, but uh, we'll, we'll get into that too. So obviously you've seen these uh, many times if you've done any sort of iOS testing from a device, from the simulator. Um, I love the uh, connection failure occurred. Well, what does that really mean? It doesn't tell you anything. Um, and then cert pinning. Uh, I don't talk to strangers. So th the new thing, like I said, is uh, at least on mobile apps is the mobile app won't talk to anyone but what it thinks the server is. Um, and they do that by validating the server cert. So I'll kind of go into step by step two. Uh, like I said, this, this isn't quite as uh, interesting as the Android stuff and doesn't take as much time. Uh, but reverse proxy is real straightforward. Pick your proxy. Uh, it doesn't seem to matter which one you use in iOS. Uh, with, with Android, there's some other issues uh, with some of the traffic. But uh, um, you know, I've used all of them. They all work fairly well. Step two is adding the CA to the device. There's many ways to do this. I, myself, like to use configuration profiles. Uh, they're much easier to add and remove with the iOS configuration tool. Um, but as you can see, you can add just the cert itself and install it or move it every time from your, uh, from your device. But uh, I do this for many reasons. I install it and uninstall it to many, many different devices quite frequently. It just makes it a lot easier for me. And then step three is set up the proxy. Like I said before, most of you have done the testing before. I've seen this screen. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, Obviously, the device or simulator have to be on the same network as your proxy, uh, and you set your proxy in port, and you should be good to go at this point, and we're happy, 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 as uh, Phil would say from, from Duck Dynasty, but uh, that's the easy one. What about you sim the simulator? So the simulator is good and bad, so obviously most of you who know the Mac know that the Mac has a key store, a keychain. Uh, well, the simulator doesn't use it. Uh, it has its own keychain, and it has its own trust store. The reason they do this is because they want it to look and feel like the actual device itself. Uh, but it makes it a little bit more difficult to test. Uh, early in iOS, there was a Python script release that would add your cert to the trust store, but that doesn't seem to work anymore. It, it only added the SHA-1 hash of the cert, uh, but you need a little bit more. Um, so the only way that I've been doing it is I just grab this file off of a device once I've added my cert to a device. And then I can just put this Trust Store SQLite 3 file onto my Mac, and it will just work then in my simulator. Seems to work pretty straightforward. Um, other than that, I'm sure you know, we could look into updating the Python script. Um, but most people who are doing some sort of testing would have access to a device too. And then you always have it, as long as you don't change machines or update your proxy. And then it does utilize the system proxy. So it doesn't utilize the keychain, doesn't utilize uh, any of that, but it does use the system proxy uh, on your Mac. So you gotta go in and you set up your proxies here in the Mac, uh, and then it should work. Sometimes it doesn't seem to pick that up right away and you gotta stop and start Xcode and all that a few times, uh, but it will eventually work, and then your, your search should be trusted. And then it's on like Donkey Kong, right? Um, we're, we're good to go. Like I said before, I don't want to spend two days trying to set up proxy. That should be something that's quick. There should be a, a document that walks me through exactly what to do. Um, and there's thousands of them on the web, but some of them work, some of them don't. So cert pinning. Like I said, we've been seeing more of this. Twitter does it. Um, some of those uh, social networks and so on are doing more of this, where they say, I'm not going to talk to anyone but who I think the server is. And that does cause issues when we're testing. Uh, some of our clients are very sensitive and they want to do cert pinning, but they still want us to test. So how do we fix that? Well, it doesn't have anything to do with Pinterest. Uh, but this little tool here uh, was released at Black Hat by ISEC Partners called SSL Kill Switch. It is awesome. Um, basically works on a jailbroken device. Uh, it's a mobile substrate extension that disables cert validation and NSURL connection. And it works really, really well. So well, in fact, that it scares me a little bit that an attacker would install it on your device and hook you up to their proxy, and, and now they've pretty much compromised all of your traffic. Um, but it, it, it's really, really good. So does that mean, like, if you have a client server app, like, let's say, the Time Warner app that installs on iPads, it actually checks the system yep. SSL 
the, yeah, it shuts it off. Uh, you know, because those are all using NSURL connection at least at the, the so low it's end. Not, it's not just for like the no. web browser. It's for, it's for the entire device. It shuts it off. Yeah. Is there an Android version of that? So at Black Hat, they talked about an Android version uh, of this. <coughs> It was supposed to be released two weeks after Black Hat. I haven't seen it yet, and I haven't talked to them, so I don't know if it's, it's something that they're coming out with or running into problems. It didn't seem to be as straightforward as this. I mean, this, this is an easy install. I mean, it installs in, in less than a minute. Um, you know, it's on, on Cydia, so it's, it's great. Um, so this is what Twitter looks like before it, right? So like I said, Twitter is doing cert pinning. This is my iPad. I get this weird error that doesn't really tell me anything. Uh, it says I can't connect. Um, so I install SSL kill switch, voila, look, I've got traffic and I've got Twitter working. Uh, it, it just shuts it off, uh, the cert validation. Like I said, it's good and bad. It helps me when I want to test, uh, but it also helps the attackers. And uh, it's scientific, right? So, uh, so summing it all up, um, it's interesting, right? So when we submitted this talk, few months ago, it, it was even more difficult on the Android side. ICS hadn't come out really yet. Um, the cert upload and trusting thing didn't even function. I mean, most of this talk was really focused on Android, because iOS has always just kind of worked. But we always had issues with Android. It never seemed to work the same with different apps. Um, and we still run into those issues. Um, but I think, you know, step one here, determine which method works for you or your app and stick with it. Um, obviously, we want to do a reverse proxy as much as we can, but sometimes that's just not going to work. Um, and know any SSL gotchas of, of whatever OS you may be testing, whether it's Android, iOS, or, or whatever else. Now, here, here's where we come in and, and OWASP should come in. Um, the only difference between screwing around in science is writing it down. Like I said, there's thousands of these guides of how to do this out there. Uh, some of them work, some of them don't. What we want to see is, is we want to see this as part of the mobile project, and, and I'll talk to, to Jack about this, is providing these guides so we don't have to waste days at a time trying to set up proxies, because that's not the point. The point is to test the apps and make sure that they're you know, secure as can be. Um, right now, we have internal guides that, that we're going to donate to at least get the ball rolling, uh, and then anything else anyone else has seen, um, we can add and, and modify at that point. Obviously, this is focused strictly on HTTP and HTTPS. If there's apps using other protocols, you know, there's Mallory and other things too. But for the most part, I think I've seen one app that uses UDP, and everything else is some sort of web service or uh, using backend HTTP or HTTPS. And that's it. Um, this is available for download. Yeah, <laughs> 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 Right. Um, it's available for download here. I believe it's going to be on OWASP site too. Um, and uh, yeah, questions? When are you going to post your GDP? Hopefully within a couple weeks. Um, we just got to organize what we have because it's kind of all over the place. And then uh, hopefully we can get the community to add the things they know and do and, and, and so on. You said uh, Android stuff's been getting better from the last couple of years. Any feelings for whether Jelly Bean is? So, I mean, it, we're, we're having this discussion the other day, and, and you can talk to some of it as well, but, you know, there, there are some, some security stuff that is suspected that they're implementing that we know that they're going to implement, like, uh, I think the next version of Android is going to get SE Linux, um, and, um, what was the, was multiple user profiles on the device. That's the next one. What about Jelly Bean? Anyone else? So what makes the difference is that some of the applications uh, all of this other zone makes the difference uh, as far as internal um, So um, So we have with the reverse proxying of, of the native <coughs> applications, uh, if you use one of the examples I gave was the using a third party proxy tool to if you're testing from device. And you know, for, for whatever reason it, it only works with, with certain applications. You know, there there's random times we can't get it to 
can't get it to work. Um, there are instances with the CERT thing where we can't do reverse proxy and we have to do forward proxy. That's, it. That's another example. Because um, you, can, you can forward proxy over, over HTTP. You can tell it, use my, use my proxy uh, without SSL. And then, you know, if the, the real server is enforcing SSL, you can, you can tell your proxy to, to do SSL on the back end. So yeah, I mean, as an, as an example, one app we tested was doing some some cert validation. It was, uh, it's from Verisign. I mean, it wasn't really doing cert pinning, but it's uh, make sure it's from Verisign. So we tried the forward proxy and it just bypassed that piece in the code. Um, so now it's, it's not verifying because it's not SSL anymore. Um, so that that's really the use case for, for that sort of thing, for <laughs> forward proxy. Um, I can't think of any other. Yeah, I mean, I the main thing is just the difference in you know what approach you need to use depending on the environment and then depending on the type of application. You know, if it's a web app, you can use you know option A or B, but if it's a native app, you need to use C or D, and um, you know, that can be kind of confusing unless you have you know, gone through the motions of the two, the four-day process of trying to, to learn and figure out you know what approach do I need to take, um, and I think that that's. But that's one of the reasons why we need to have a, a good guide that's, uh, that's updated because this yeah. this information may change and some of it may not even be correct, right? Like we've done our best to document the issues that we've we've had, what works in what environments. Some of the you know the chart that I threw up there for five seconds, um, but you know, it's probably not all inclusive. And probably there are issues we haven't talked about. So. Have you guys seen any differences uh, in the behavior of proxy tools depending on whether the device is permanently rooted or temporarily rooted? Because there's tools that where you can temporarily root your device versus permanently rooted. Yeah, I don't think that that impacts proxying. Uh, some of the proxies don't work with the reverse proxy option. Um, there's some, I think, and, I think the Android emulator sends a so it says a SSL connect, yeah, SSL right? Connect and and, and, and a lot of the proxies will just drop it. Yeah. And then it gets confused, right? So, and then the only option is to use a, a forward proxy. Um, with yeah, it's, it's, it's trying to connect to the actual IP address, which confuses it. Um, but Burp, for instance, has fixed that on the proxy side. So, Burp, the newest version of Burp Pro works with Android now, but some of the older uh, proxies don't. Some of the few apps are tested, I've found. Yeah, I've, I've really uh, grown accustomed to that tool. Uh, I was using ASP proxy for a while, uh, but that's, you gotta pay for it. <laughs> to give you an example, like, uh, you know, when I do Android testing, I almost, I don't have a permanent root on the device that I use. I usually test from the emulator, but if I need to test from a device, I don't have a permanent root. I usually use PS neuter, which is a reboot, and then it's back to normal. Uh, and that hasn't hasn't impacted me yet. Yeah, Z4 root works well too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, can you speak to a little bit about doing the web services and what proxy recommend? I mean, from my standpoint, I use Burp. I know Dan and others like the Zap proxy, uh, but they they all work just fine for any sort of web service testing that you'd be doing. Um, it depends on how many custom requests you want to create and how you want to do that. Um, some of them work better than others, but I'm, I'm pretty much a Burp guy just because of the, the, the Android thing too, uh, with the way it does the connects. But there SOAP UI works. Yeah, SOAP UI works pretty well too as far as you know, sending direct web service requests. You know, if you're talking SOAP or, or Anything else? Do you have a question? Or no well, thanks. Appreciate sure. it.